But in the back of your mind, you said, I want to do this. How, how did you get up yeah. on stage first time? I was in high school and I was listening to the radio to WBCN in Boston and they used to have five o'clock funnies. And um, so they had a guy on named Chance Langton who was a comedian in Boston and just a local, I didn't know there was local comedy. Mm. I thought it was just those huge guys with albums. And all of a sudden I'm listening to this guy who's really funny. And then they came on and said, that's Chance Langton. You can see him this weekend at whatever, at the Comedy Connection. And by the way, if you go to Stitches and on Com Ave on Sunday nights, you can go on, anybody can go on. It was open mic night. Just show up and, and sign up. And so I started to try to think of five minutes. And I, I thought I had an hour of amazing material. Like I literally <laughs> thought like, I've got so much shit and I'm gonna go up and blow them away. And I'm gonna be a star tomorrow, like next week, like I'm making my plans. I don't have to do any homework. I mean, I'm gonna be a huge star. Cause I also pictured I'd be the, I'd be the only one. And I pictured all these cleat like a guy with cigar. Who's the new kid, you know? <laughs> Be like this is the kid and all these grown-up comics would be like but I get there there's a line of really uh, uh, competent comedians who are just doing open mic night. Right. and there was a lot of competition but I got on stage and I did a, a minute and a half <laughs> to total silence every single thing I did was a terrible idea <laughs> just total and also I'm looking at a bunch of um, grown-ups drinking these are like people in their 20s and 30s like Boston fucking bar drunks and I'm trying to make them laugh, and it was all, it was the, one, of the, one of the worst things to, de to date that's ever happened to me. It was the first time I ever went on stage. And I just, I was so ashamed, and uh... Do you remember any of the jokes or anything that you were doing? Yeah, I can't, I can't, I remember all of them. <laughs> I remember the whole set. In front of my... But it's kind of like, I, I just asked you, hey, tell me about the time you were molested when you were Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, like you could just rail, oh, I was about 14 and uh, my dad fucked me in the ass. I think it, it must have been fall because it was, uh, you know. Uh, I had the Red Sox win the playoffs, so I remember, and I, you know, jizzed on my face. So I said, no, uh, I think it's good to have some scars that don't heal. Just No, absolutely. It. The pain is still there. I, to me, that, that's what started a pattern of my whole life, which is survival of failure. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if you can go to places and fail and come out intact, you've got a huge wealth of information. Sure. Uh, bombing is much more instructive than when you kill, you just go, all right, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't learn anything. You don't even remember why you killed. Yeah. You just go, oh, it was great, because I'm great. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. But when you bomb, it's like a, it's like a murder happened to you. <laughs> and there you've got uh, data, you've got evidence. It's like uh, forensics. CSI now. Yeah, right? yeah. You, and you walk around poking things with the pencil and go, well, if you hadn't said this after that. It wouldn't have gone so bad, and you learned you have a huge wealth of information. Yeah, it is really funny with at that stage where you go back and go, I came out with the wrong attitude mm -hmm. immediately, and then mm -hmm. you don't have the skills to pick it back up. Exactly. You know? uh, and when the audience sees the lack of confidence. Oh, they just pounce with yeah. hatred. They were so mean, too, and <laughs> oh, it was just awful. I mean, just with silence. I felt they were mean right. <laughs> with silence. They didn't do it, they didn't make a noise. Nobody right. heckled, but I, I hated them. I felt really hateful towards the audience, and I tried it one more time, and uh, I wasn't gonna do it, but I, Ke Kevin Meany, who uh, was the comic in Boston at mm -hmm. the time, I worked at a video store, and he used to come in and rent videos, and so I got to know him, and I told him that I had tried stand-up, and he said, oh, you gotta come do my show. And he had a show called The Sweeney Meanie Show, which was the biggest show in Boston. He said, you gotta come, come on my show. And I said, well, I've only done it once and it was bad. Let, let me get good at it. And he goes, no, 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 I, only want, I want you now. Because uh, it, it's comedy tragedy. I wanna watch, I wanna watch you bomb <laughs> on my show. And I went and did his show, and it was packed, and it, people were so excited, and him and Sweeney did this We Are the World thing that it was just dis destroyed, and then they brought me on, <laughs> and I equally, more, worsely bombed. <laughs> and I just, I can't describe how horrible that, that felt. And, uh, and I was 18, and I knew I wasn't gonna go to college, and so I'm like, well, I can't be a comedian. That's not gonna work. Right. It was really depressing. It is. <laughs> I didn't do stand-up for almost a year after the second but, time. I mean, now, looking back on it, you would expect mm. it, because it's almost like you 
put on some shoulder pads and a helmet and walked out with the Patriots. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, was, I think exactly. I can play this. Yeah, I can, I can do this. And Have they, you ever played? No, I watched a lot, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm ready. Exactly. And I was a kid. I was just, uh, Somehow I got skinny in those years of my life, so I was this weird, skinny kid with a big head um, looking nervous. I mean, I... I uh, the only thing worse than being me would have been watching me in the audience. Yeah. I think. There's probably still people in those two audiences that, like, once in a while, go, "Oh God, that was that kid. That was awful." And they remember it as well as I do. And then they'll see you on Letterman or something. Yeah, they go, no, that's not the same guy. Can't fit. That's not the same guy. That odd kid. But uh, you came up with a good point. Like any thinking person, any person that could learn would go, "I can't do this. I won't go back." Yeah. What is it about you that said, I, I got to go back there? I guess I looked back at the pain of it and I thought, well, I did it. I got I, it hurt, but I survived it. Well, what really happened was like a, 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 almost a year after the second time I, I went to this place in 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 Boston and in Cambridge, really this place in Central Square, um, you know, the Cambridge kind of Harvard weird hippie area. They had a place called the Off the Wall Cinema, which showed old movies and weird movies. And I used to go there. And they had comedy night every Saturday at midnight. So I went to that, and it was a totally different crop of comedians. They were just weird. It was hosted by a guy named Ron Lynch, who's just a really strange, esoteric comic. And uh, they were really offbeat, like Steve Martin was. And I thought, oh, that, that, I, can, that I can do. So I, I begged him, the whole, I just went up to the host and said, please let me go on here. And he said, I only use you know, professionals. And I said, just please. I was you know, this kid <laughs> just mm -hmm. saying, I have to do this. And he said, you need to make a tape. I need to hear a tape. And I didn't want to go back to the stitches. So I got my friends to get in a room with me in a tape recorder. And they clink, like they clink glasses together so it sounded like a nightclub. Like, <clears throat> and actually, I was so afraid to do it that I made, my friend had a, he did music, so he had a, like a two-track recorder. So I was in the room alone telling the jokes. And then afterwards, they recorded. And I didn't let them listen to the jokes. I, I listened to my part and went like, laugh here. <laughs> And I actually thought that he, and I gave it to Ron and he listened and then the next week I came back and he said, well, if you invite those idiots on tape <laughs> to sit in the front row, but he put me on and I started doing it and I had a little success, little titters, little tiny laughs and that was enough to me. To just to keep to feeding keep trying on it. that, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, mean, I liked it. To, to this day, I still go like, yeah, that, I'm not going to be good at that. Mm -hmm. Fuck it, let's try it. You still to this... When I first did it, I bombed really bad. I was so out of sorts, it was the worst thing I'd ever, that had ever happened to me the very first time I did it. And I did it a second time just because I wanted to know if it was really that bad, if it was just a bad night. And it was worse. <laughs> and so, that was when I was in high school. And then I didn't do it again for almost a year. And then I went to this weird offbeat place in Cambridge, Massachusetts that was just fun, weird, it was a uh, off the wall cinema. It was a place where you would watch like uh, Dada films and eat carrot cake. <laughs> and uh, they did stand up comedy midnight on Saturdays. So I went to the show and it was a really weird show, strange, trippy comedians. And I tried it there and I had a really great set. That was my third time on stage. And I thought, I can do this. And then I bombed several times after that, but I didn't care. Because that one set really got the hook in me. So that's, I, I didn't know if I was good at it. I just thought, I have, a, I have a way that this is something I could do that I enjoy. People laughed. You know, those 14 people in that club were responsible for a lot. Because <laughs> if I'd bombed that third time, I probably, I probably wouldn't be alive <laughs> at all. I don't think I had a shot at anything else, really. So you, to me, it yeah. seems, studying your career now... Yeah. Other people might have given up stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the luck wasn't there for you early on. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, got, you spent a lot of years, you get out of high school, you start mm -hmm. to go... What, what was the first comedy club you ever went to? Uh, Stitches in Boston. Now, what gave you the balls to go do that? It's just something you knew you had to do. I heard that there was comedy in Boston. I never knew. I didn't know. I didn't have a path for how to be a stand-up comic. And mm -hmm. I was washing the kitchen floor. My mom was paying me two bucks to wash the kitchen floor. You had a job with your mom. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> you were really a loser. At, I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken also. I had a lot of jobs when I was a kid. But at the time, I, I was taking a girl out, and my mom gave me a couple bucks to wash the floor. Okay, so I was watching the 
floor, and I heard on the NBC, the radio, the biggest station in Boston, then uh, that there was going to be um, an open mic. Right. And I didn't understand. And then they explained if you think you're funny, you just come, you sign up, and you get on stage automatically. It's now, had open. You, I, aside from high school, maybe a little bit of a going up. Nothing. You never did high school plays. No. You never got up in front of audiences. Mm -mm. And you say, this is something I can do. Holy I'm shit. Try. I could go to Boston. I could take a bus there, and I could be on stage. Had you written Sunday. anything? Did you have any idea what you were going to do on stage? No, I, did. I gave myself like three weeks to think about it. Right. And I would sit and uh, just think about jokes, and I'd say, I'd whisper them to myself. I was afraid to say, to raise my voice wow. out loud. That's amazing. And I thought I had like, I was like, I have like two hours of great material. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> that's what I believed. You're a genius. I was like, this is going to be, the, to, that's going to be the, the, the next great thing in comedy. In your mind, you realized this yeah. is a great two hours of material. Oh my God, I'm so funny. And you didn't scribble it down or anything? No, no, no. I kept it all in my head. I just thought of it. And then I went on stage and I did about a minute and a half. <laughs> And just <laughs> and people just stared at me. <laughs> what was the minute and a half? Do you remember the theme of what you were talking about? I remember one joke was I asked my mom what sex is. <laughs> this is just so awful. She said sex is what happens when Mrs. Brady turns off the lights. So I always thought that sex was a commercial for paper towels. <laughs> Uh, what? Oh dear! Uh, oh my God! Isn't that awful? Yeah, I mean, oh. I thought I, w I thought that was hysterically funny when I was a kid, and I wow. said it to an audience, and they went like, "Ew!" Like literally, <laughs> people went, "Ew!" Yeah, right. Yeah, and I was like. I think that's all I really have. <laughs> you walked away humiliated? <laughs> yeah. Did I walked you... off after a minute and a half, and the MC made fun of me for like 10 minutes. Did any of wow. your bad friends come down to me? I had to... one friend who came with me. Yeah. And, and w w was he honest with you and said, oh, my God, you were horrible? No, off, like, it was, well, that would have been better. Right. And he was it, like, that was good, and I could tell he didn't mean it. Do you go through the process of beating yourself up and being terribly embarrassed, or do you say, I'm just got to get back up that and do that? was a terrible that. feeling. I wanted to die. I hated it. And why didn't you walk away at that point? Well, a little little time go by, and I was like, "Well, I didn't die, and right. I'm still interested." That's what's always that's the cycle that's always been. It's like, all right, that felt bad when it was going on, and I've healed now, and I'm still interested in trying again. So I, got, I made it through. I made it through that bad feeling. I can handle feeling that bad. Was the so second you bomb the very first time? Oh you yeah, because they said you know they say that uh, you need to really die on stage mm -hmm. was the in order to get good. Was yes. the second experience better? No. It was not. It was worse. You were, you were even worse. Yeah, because Kevin, you know Kevin Meany? Yeah, uh, sure. Kevin Meany was uh, a big, huge comic in town at the time in Boston. Right. He was a huge local guy. And I worked at a video store at the time, and he came into uh, the store, and he, I, I told him I tried it. Right. He said, oh, you got to come on my show. I have a show. Come on it. And I said, I can't. his show was like the big, it was the, the big night. Right. And I said, I can't uh, do that. I need more time to get ready. He goes, no, no, no. I want, I want you on <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So he put me on yeah. in front of a full, just excited. Him and this guy, Steve Sweeney, did a We Are the World parody. Right. And just brought the house down. And then they brought me on. Oh. Oh, and it no. was worse. It was worse. It was Were you just, sweating bullets? Oh, I, it was awful. I couldn't. I was shaking, and I think they could, like, literally my hands were shaking. <laughs> yeah. And my heart was pounding so that my head kept bobbing up and down, and it was... <laughs> was that cruel of Kevin to do to yeah. you? It was. He yeah. did that too because he wanted to watch you suffer. Yeah. Wow. Have you, you talked to him about that since? Uh, no, I don't think we ever discussed it. <laughs> you don't want to talk to him ever no. again. No. <laughs> it's too bad you don't have tape of that stuff. Wouldn't that be great to yeah. go back and look at it? Do you think he could handle looking at that? I don't know. It's, it's hard to it look is. at it. I have one tape from me from 1987. Have you ever actually sat and watched it? N I watched it once a few years ago, and it, I'm I'm. Burned Rating an audience member because oh, what you hear me going on to silence doing <laughs> jokes and then someone makes a noise and I go hey fuck you I'm uh, this is my job and I'm working <laughs> ready to attack yeah angry were you an angry guy no not really no. I used to I've always gotten mad at people that talk to comedians but so don't you have to be mad. angry to really come up with with uh, good comedy don't you have to really just be pissed off at the world and see all the stupidity in it no I think it comes from curiosity I think it comes from a playful curiosity. I don't. I never feel it. I'm not angry. And, and, uh, he doesn't seem like an angry guy. Nah, no, not, yeah. Nothing makes me. That well, mad. you should be. We'll make you angry. <laughs> but don't you think that? Uh, so, so, what point do you start to feel like, hey, I'm pretty good at this? Uh, okay. Well, I did it though two times, and then I decided I don't think I don't think I I can do. It. Also, I was too young. Right. Mm. I felt that I was 17, 18. Uh, yeah, the first time I did it, I didn't like I, the two first two times. I felt like I'm, these people are all drinking and they're in their twenties, and I'm it's eighteen, seventeen. Yeah. So I stopped, and then a year went by, and I went to a place in Harvard Square that had really this cool kind of earthy coffee club. 
yeah. stand up, you know? Yeah. And I did that and they liked me there. It, it got a little better. I had one good set. Had you spent the year like developing material? No, I didn't think about it much. But then I saw this place and I thought, that feels friendly. That doesn't feel. Stitches just felt bad just walking in there. Right. Yeah. What were... Do you um, remember your first yeah. open mic night? Was that how you Hell started? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that. Can it you tell horrible. us about it? Well, I I got this. I found out that you could do open. There was an open mic night at a club in Boston where I started called Stitches. And I was actually like 17, almost 18 years old. And um, I thought, geez, you can go on stage. It, they said you do five minutes. You just put your name in a hat and you get on stage. You can be anybody. That was so exciting to me. So I went to this club, Stitches, which is very grown up. They didn't even want to let me in because I was underage. And they have a drinking, you know, and a liquor license. And then I went on stage and I did about two minutes because I didn't have enough material. Like I just ran. I sputtered. My whole throat constricted and my I heard this roaring in my ears. My eyes were watering. My um, heart was pounding and I couldn't control myself. I couldn't think straight. And all these adults, like drinking adults, were looking at me like I'm an idiot. And I just walked off stage to kind of confused, like, little applause. <laughs> and I just felt like a pile of garbage. Um, so... And I did, then I kept doing it. <laughs> okay, so you did really terribly on stage. Yeah. What made you think... I need to do more of this. I want to get back on there. <laughs> well, I didn't do it for a little while. And then at the time I was working at a, a video rental store in Newton, Massachusetts, where I grew up. And Kevin Meany, who was a very big star in the Boston comedy scene back then, Boston had a very strong local scene. And I knew who Kevin was. I heard him on the radio and stuff. And Kevin was a customer at the store I went to that I worked at. And um, I told him that I had done an open mic. And he said, oh, well, you got to come on my show. He had a show that was a huge, him and Steve Sweeney, these two great comics, they had this show where they would, you know, they'd pack the room and put on all the best comics in Boston. And he said, come be on my show. And I said, well, no, I'd need to practice, like, you know, do more shows to get good enough. And he said, no, I won't let you go on my show unless you go on now. He said, I'm, it's interesting because you don't know what you're, like, it's comedy tragedy. He kind of wanted me to go on and bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went again to Stitches, and it was a Wednesday night. It was Sweeney Meany night. It was jam-packed, and I went on, and I think the audience, they actually, people's mouths were open. They were shocked at how bad I was. <laughs> Just shocked. And I, I got off stage, and, and Kevin wouldn't look me in the eye, and nobody would, and it was just the most pulverizing humiliation. It was much worse than the first time. Because it was a really, you know, the first time was an open mic night. The premise of the show is that most of us don't know what we're doing. But this was a professional comedy show. And I went on it and just flailed. I mean, it was a nightmare. So was Kevin Meany cutting you a break or being really cruel and putting you on after that? You know, that's open to interpretation. I don't know. I mean, he, he must have known how bad it was going to hurt me. But... uh to me, I think he was giving me a break. It was up to me to make it into something. Who knows? Maybe I could have. Maybe I was funny. He hadn't seen me. Do you know what I mean? So he was giving me a chance. He was letting. It's interesting when somebody becomes an agent in your life for a minute. You know what I mean? And they go, well, let's see what happens if you do this now. Um, it was a formative experience. Sitting here now, I'm very glad I had it. It was Why? a great, great thing. Because it was. It, it gave me a really realistic, shocking picture of what I was facing. Um, that show that I did and that audience and that night, that was still the terrain that I work at today. I think if you're just looking for easy ways or you're looking for victories through life, I don't think you're really getting much out of it. I think you have to, if you really know how hard stuff is and despite that you extract some tools out of yourself, it's better for you. And the next time I went on stage, I was very wary. <laughs> so what was the first um, time when you felt like you started to understand who you were on stage and like what your on stage personality was going to be what your you know persona if i could use that word was going to be like what the stage version of you was going to be uh the first time i went on stage i did i did kind of offbeat and weird jokes just because i thought you might as well try being more like what you makes you laugh um i did really well my third time on stage i had really big laughs 
and other comedians came up to me and said, hey, you're funny. You got something. And I was so excited that I had a, a little foot in the door that this is something I could maybe do. And I thought it's me being kind of weird the way I am in real life. I'm, I like to say things that don't make a whole lot of sense or surprise people a little bit. But then I got seduced by getting big laughs. And then I just started doing – I once you get laughs, you're like, oh, I'll do anything for that feeling. That feels <laughs> – really good so then you start thinking it's just jokes so so the first time you were on stage and started doing jo- jokes where the comics were coming up to you and saying that that was good you've got something what were you mm-hmm. doing well, what is it that you were doing on stage that they had a positive reaction to you i was doing more kind of contemplative weird jokes i i did i don't think i did things that were self-reflective i did things that were just like well one of the bits was about street signs that i thought they should be punctuated because I got confused by them, like signs like "No U-turn," uh, you know, uh, um, "Drive slow, children," that kind of thing. It was just taking these street signs and reimagining them, <laughs> and that was an offbeat, funny, silly bit, and it made people laugh. And that's the only one I remember from then now. 